Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to this class tonight. Uh, I'm saying tonight because this is the the night for me. Uh, it's 8 p.m. here in, in France. Um, so welcome, guys. Welcome, everybody. I'm very happy to be with you tonight. Um, so, so, so lots of things to cover tonight, today, but today I'm going to, I want to give you an introduction about French wine to give you a few tips, uh, easy tips huh, so that you can feel comfortable when you come across a bottle of French wine, you know, what you drink, what you're going to drink, what's behind the label. Um, so um, I just want to make a few technical check to see if uh Everything is all right. So um, you have a chat on the right of your screen. Should be on the right of your screen. Uh, let me know in the chat if you can uh, hear me, uh, if you can see me, if everything is okay. I uh, just want to make sure everything works. Okay. So welcome. Um, so tonight we should be about uh, between 40 and 50 persons from a... Uh, well, different countries, uh, mostly in Europe, I think. But we might have a few people from Asia, even if it's nighttime, <laughs> and maybe a few people from and the US. Um, bonsoir, Ashley. How are you? How is Malawi? <laughs> Elsa, how are you? Um, nice to see you. Maybe I'm going to see you in France soon. <laughs> Everything is working in Malawi. Perfect. Hi, Leo. Okay, looks like it's working. Good. So, uh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start in just in one minute, uh, just waiting for a few other persons coming. Great. Nice to see you. Yeah. Mihailova, nice to see you. You can see me and you can hear me. Good. Good, good news. Okay, so tonight the subject is 10 tips to understand French wine. So I want to refresh a bit your memory about French wine, uh, especially now. I think that's the good, good time because we, we're coming to the end of the year. That's really the time in France where people, they drink a lot of wine. We celebrate uh, Christmas, the end of the year. Um, even at work, you know, many uh, companies, they they gather all the teams together for the end of the year. And especially right now, you know, in France, uh, with the, the pandemic, with the COVID, we could not meet together. So since now, uh, September, everything is, is now opening again. So uh, people are just uh, celebrating life. Okay. Um, okay, let's get started. And uh, people who are a bit late, they will join us uh, during the conference. Um, so today, today we're going to be together for 45 minutes, maximum one hour. Uh, so make yourself comfortable and there will be a replay available. So if you have to leave before the end or um, and if you miss a part of the conference, you can have the, the replay. OK, but the replay will not be available all the time, but you know, in the coming days. So. Um, Let's get started. Uh, so, well, just a, a short presentation because I know some of you uh, know me already. So my name is Alexis, I'm French. Uh, you have my Instagram, if you want to follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm French sommelier. I'm, I'm working in the wine industry since um, 10 years now, 2011. So I, I've been first creating some uh, wine testing classes in Paris to welcome visitors from all over the world. To teach French wine, um, I've been also training some uh, restaurant staff. Uh, I've been traveling quite a lot before the pandemic, of course, and giving wine lectures in different places. Um, during between 2017 and 20, I've been in charge of the Loire Valley Appellation, uh, the Bourgogne Appellation in the Loire. And today, what I'm doing today, I'm doing basically two things today. First, uh, keeping on uh, teaching French wine, mostly online, um, and welcoming also people here in France. But uh, also, I'm I'm selling wine, French wine, uh, in France, but also outside France. So I have a like a wine club today, uh, and I feel the seller of my clients. 
um, with French wine from all the different regions, from the best estates. Um, and I have a, an online course. I'm going to talk about this a bit later at the end of the conference. Okay. Uh, there's a Facebook private group if you want to come you you really welcome uh, i'm going to try to give you the link uh, um where is the link uh, yeah, here i'm going to give you the the link in the chat so just click on the link and uh, we'll welcome you okay you have the link in the chat uh okay so to uh, so the objectives of, of today's presentation uh, is try to make you feel comfortable when you come across a French label, uh, help you choose a bottle of wine at the restaurant, um, being able to identify the best values huh, when you, again, if you enter a wine shop, for instance, and well, just enjoy your bottle of French wine and share your knowledge. Huh? If you have friends, uh, wine lovers, friends around you, uh, I'm going to give you a few keys that you can also share with your friends. Uh, so this class is for uh, beginners. If you wine beginners, that's totally okay. Huh? That's, I think, the good start. Uh, it's also for people like a WSCT student. Uh, any wine lovers who want to increase their knowledge about French wine. And well, also for wine and food professionals, uh, it can help you as well. Okay? Especially if you sell French wine. So I'm, give, I'm going to give you a few tips to help you maybe sell French wine where you work. Um, so first, um, just before entering into those 10 tips to cover a bit French wine, just want to make you look at this map of France. So this is France. Huh? Um, and on this map, you see all the, 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 the major wine regions. So each color corresponds to a major wine region in France. Uh, you, I'm sure you might have heard of Champagne in the north, the, the gray, gray color. Uh, you might have heard of Bordeaux, Bordeaux in the southwest, and this red color. Uh, just a bit north, you have the Loire, which is very, very wide in the Loire, the Loire Valley, the green color. Uh, you have Burgundy, the pink color, uh, Beaujolais, the Rhone, the yellow color, and all the Mediterranean vineyards. So uh, if we start from the west, Languedoc, Roussillon, and then when you go east uh, to Provence, the pink color, and also the southern one. Okay, so this is France, and I'm going to come back to this map uh, a few times to uh, to remind you a few things uh, about the differences between the region. We're going to see later that region in France that's really key to understand what you drink. Um, okay, so this is the map of France. So first, the first tip, I want to start with this tonight. Um, it's about the color. Uh, the color, the, and I'm, I'm going to make a difference between the northern region in the north part of France and the southern region, the south. So the thing is, in France, if you look at this map, that's the same map, huh? uh, if you draw a virtual line in the middle, in the north, you're going to find a majority of white wines. Okay, that's the case in the Loire Valley, majority of whites. North, north of Burgundy, Chablis, you might have heard of Chablis, um, Alsace, in the east, close to Germany, Champagne, of course. And then when you go south, uh, in the south of this virtual line, you're going to find a majority of red wine. So Bordeaux, of course, the Rhone, the Languedoc, um, and Beaujolais, and the south of Burgundy. So more white in the north, more red wine in the south. Of course, you're going to find some red in the north and some white in the south. But the thing is, in France, I'm going to reduce my uh, video. Let me see. Yeah. So I'm very small right now. <laughs> so the thing is, in France, the more you go south in France, the more the, the warmer the climate is. So um, temperatures are much warmer in the south and much cooler in the north. So when you get those differences in terms of temperatures, of climates, well, it's much easier to make some um, uh, dry, crisp, white in the north and in the south the the, the black varieties they need more ripeness uh, so you get this when you get more sun so mostly in the south and so it's most mainly due to this difference difference of climate okay uh, i didn't say but if you have any questions don't hesitate to write your comments or your questions in the chat on the right and uh, i'm going to try to answer 
so I'm going to have a look sometimes at, the, at your questions. But uh, anyway, at the end of the presentation, I'm going to go through all the different questions and answer, OK? So don't hesitate to comment using the chat on the right. OK, so tip number one, more white in the north, more red in the south. So if, you're, if you are more like a white drinker, if you like dry white, well, maybe look at the regions in the north. You're going to you're gonna find, I'm sure what you what you like. If you're more like a red wine drinker, full-bodied red wines, look at the south of France, okay? That's the tip number one. So um, that's the first thing I wanna tell you. So, oh, you have here, that's a beautiful picture of the Sancerre vineyard, that's Loire Valley in the north part of France. Now, tip number two. Uh, it's 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 still a reference to the northern France and southern France, uh, but this is about the grape varieties. Okay, um, so if we still refer to this virtual line in the north part of France, most of the wines they are made with one single grape variety. So we call those wines varietal wines. Okay, uh, like in the Loire, you're gonna find a hundred percent Sauvignon Blanc. 100% Chenin Blanc, 100% Cabernet Franc, uh, Alsace, that's 100% Riesling, uh, Burgundy, North Burgundy, 100% Chardonnay or 100% Pinot Noir. So varietal wines in the North, just one variety. And if we go South, if you go to Bordeaux, if you go to the Rhone Valley, if you go to the Languedoc, you're going to see that most wines, they are made with different grapes. They are blend. We call this a blend. A blend is a wine made, made of different grapes. So a typical red from Bordeaux, that's a blend of the Merlot, the Cabernet Sauvignon, the Cabernet Franc, uh, sometimes a bit of Malbec, you see. If you go to the Rhone, a typical red from the Rhone, there is a bit of Grenache, a bit of Syrah. So they blend varieties together. So why do they do blend in the South? Because sometimes just one grape alone is a bit unbalanced. You get um, too many tannins, too much alcohol. So they have to balance the wines using uh, different grape varieties. Okay? So remember this, huh? blend in the south, varietal wines in the north. You might find a few blends in the north and, and also some varietal wines in the south, but that's really the majority, huh? the, the blends in the south and the varietal wines in the north. Okay? Oh, another nice picture. This is the village of Saint-Emilion. For those of you who want to come to France, huh? uh, if you walk around Saint-Emilion, this is a uh, that's a lovely village to visit with beautiful chateau around. So this is Saint-Emilion. I think uh, Marta, you are here, so you plan to come to France. So, well, that's maybe a spot for you at Saint-Emilion. All right. Uh, no. Okay, tip number three. Um, uh, so I'll add there, but the soil, I'm going to answer this a bit later, okay? So keep on, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep your question for, for the end. Um, so tip number three, region is key. Uh, region is key in France to, to know what you drink. Uh, what I mean is that once you know the region where your wine comes from, then you can guess the style of the wine, you can guess the grape variety. So region is really key to understand French wine, okay? So that's why also I'm always doing lots of references to the regions, the wine regions. Uh, let me explain this. Uh, so know the region where your wine comes from and you'll guess the grapes and the style. That's true, that's really true. Uh, each region in France has really its identity, its own grape varieties. So let me take an example. You, you, you enter a wine shop, you see a, bot, a, a bottle of uh, a white, a white wine. Well, you look at the label, you have lots of information on the label, you're a bit lost. But at least you see that, and this wine is from the Burgundy section. Okay, so you have a white from Burgundy, that's a Chardonnay, okay? I mean, there's a high probability that you get a dry Chardonnay. Um, same if you go to Bordeaux, if you enter, if you look at the wine list and you have a, a, a red wine, oh, it's it's in the Bordeaux section. Okay, this is going to be the high chance of a blend of Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. 
Okay. Same if you go to the you, to the to the Rhone Valley. Rhone Valley that's going to be going to have some Syrah and Grenache. Okay. So each region again, I'm saying this again and again. Uh, each region has its own grape varieties and regions. So um, let me take a few examples. Uh, if you go to Riesling, for instance, if you like Riesling, you should go to Alsace in France. If you like Chardonnay, you should go to Burgundy. If you like the Chenin Blanc, you should go to the Loire Valley. Um, if you like Grenache and Syrah, that's really the Rhone, the Languedoc. So this will help you find the one you like, okay? If you like a particular grape variety, let's say, for instance, the uh, the Gamay, the Gamay grape variety, then you should go to Beaujolais. So it, it will help you know where to pick your wine, okay? So region is key in France to, 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 to understand uh, what you have on the label. So if you are a bit lost with all this French info on the label, just ask a simple question. What's the region where my bottle is coming from? Okay? Very important. So, uh, tip number four. Now, tip number four. Um, that's the bottle shapes, you know? Um, some regions in France, they have particular shapes for the bottles of wines. Uh, look at those three different shapes, which are really the, the three different shapes that you, can, you, you may come across in France. Well, first you have the Bordeaux shape. That's the, the shape on the left. In the middle, you have the Alsace shape, what we call the flute, you know, the very thin and sometimes quite high as well. And in the right, you have what we call the Burgundy shape. Well, if you see, let's say, for instance, you have a bottle of wine which has really the, the shape in the middle, in the center, well, that's, uh, that, that's going to be an Alsace wine. That's, that's the typical, that's the shape you find in Alsace only in France. Um, if you come across a bottle which look, look like the one on the left, well, you, you, you're not going to find this shape in the Loire. You will not find this in Burgundy, uh, not in the Rhone. So there's a high chance that this wines come from Bordeaux, for instance, okay? Uh, the most common shape for the bottles of wine, that's the wine on the right, so what we call the Burgundy shape, that's the shape that you're going to find in the Loire, in the Rhone, Beaujolais, the Languedoc. Um, so it will not give you the exact location where your wine comes from, but at least you can do a bit of like a filter and eliminate a few regions, okay? Ah, Janice, which region has got light bodied red wine like Pinot Noir? Well, I'm going to come back to this just in, in a moment, but um, you should have a look in the cooler climate, northern climate, more like in the north part of France, um, a bit some in the Loire and also in Alsace and also um, the Beaujolais. Beaujolais is not, it's not a full bodied red wine, but let's keep... Uh, I'm going to come back to this just in a moment, okay? So here, for instance, that's a that's a picture I took a few years ago. I was organizing a, a wine tasting for some clients in Paris. Well, you see, you have a, the first on the left, that's a bottle from the Loire, that's a Sancerre, typical shape for a Sancerre. Next, that was a, that's a Marsanet, this is a Burgundy wine, so that's typical shape for a burgundy. Then you get this old label. Uh, it's, I, can, I can see in the, the label, it says a bourgueil, that's a red Cabernet Franc from the Loire. Um, and then you have two bottles looking like the Bordeaux shape. So um, the first is coming from the Languedoc and the second, that's, that's a Bordeaux, okay? And of course, the massive big one, that's, that's a champagne. Well, that could be also another sparkling, but usually, sparkling wines they have bigger bottles because they have they have to stand all the pressure inside the bottle so that's why it's much uh, the, the glass is much thicker and it's it's much heavier all right next oh, this is something important to understand as well the aoc explanation aoc means a like appellation o origin and C controlé appellation controlé so appellation this is something you're going to find a lot uh, when you look at um, lab on at the labels okay 
So, what is first an appellation? Um, well, the appellation is a first that's a geographical location. So it gives you the, the place where the grapes, they come from, where the wine is produced. So that's first a location, okay? That can be uh, the name of a village, that can be the, the name of the whole region, that can be just a plot of vines, but any, anyway, that's, that's the name of the uh, location first. But that's not only a location, the appellations, this is also um, a set of rules that's going to give you the, the conditions of productions, okay? Uh, in the viticulture practices, the loaded grape varieties, the winemaking process, so how the wine is made. And each appellation in France has a per particular specification. Sometimes they can be very similar from one place to another. Sometimes it's different. And it's always different from a region to another wine because remember, in France, the region, they have different grapes. So that, that's it. And the appellation is a, some specification to, uh, well, it was made for the consumers a long time ago to help the consumer know what they drink. Okay, so people, they were really, they really knew well all those operations. But uh, the thing is, that's the location plus the condition of production. Uh, so each region in France has some appellations. So some regions like Burgundy, they have many, many appellations, and uh, some others that have fewer appellations. So it was created to identify the different terroir. I mean, a terroir, that's the combination of the, the soil characteristics, the landscape, the climate. Uh, this is the, the terroir, okay? It will help the consumer know what to expect when he opens uh, his bottle of wine. So again, uh, each major region includes many appellations. That can be the name of a village, that can be the name of a district, that can be the name of a plot of vine, okay? So you're going to find this a lot on the label, the appellation. So the tip number five is if you search on a label where your wine comes from, you, the place of production, always search for the appellation, okay? If you don't find appellation, you might come across two things. Sometimes it's just written IGP, uh, which, which is a bit like an appellation, but it's like a regional appellation. It's more open. And, uh, and the last that you might find is Vin de France. Uh, Vin de France used to be called table wine. Uh, it, so the grapes, they can come from all over France. But well, I just want to keep on this appellation concept. Uh, that it will really um, help you know what you drink, what you have behind the label, where the grapes, they come from. So let's continue. Um, Well, now coming back to the labels. So, if you when you look at the French labels, you will always come across four pieces of information. Okay, that's what we're going to see on this tip number six. Uh, so, you have an example of a label right here. Well, first, let's talk about those four pieces of information. First, you're going to find the name of the estate. Okay, so. Uh, the name of the estate, that can be domaine. Domaine in French means uh, estate. So domaine, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's, you're going to find this. Um, if you don't see domaine, blah, 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 something, you might come across chateau. Like Bordeaux, uh, most Bordeaux wines, they are labeled as chateau something. So the name of the chateau, that's the name of the estate. Sometimes you don't find any domaine, you don't find any... Uh, Chateau, you, you can find also the name of a person or the name of a family that they give their own name to the, the estate. Okay, so on this example, you see on the label you have Domaine Le Fleuve, Domaine Le Fleuve, that's the name of the this estate. Okay, uh, and if you don't find Domaine, if you don't find Chateau, and if you don't find the name of a person. Well, there are a few. sometimes you might, you, well, you, you're going to find the name of the estates, but it can be maybe close something, or you might also come across a few other names. But let's say that in 99% of the cases, you're going to find either domain, chateau, or the name of someone, somebody. So that first information, name of the estate. 
Second information, that's the location of production, where the grapes they come from, where the wine is produced. So I was just mentioning on the previous tip, the appellation. So if you search for the location of production, just try to identify on the label the appellation, blah, 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 controlé. So here on this example, it's 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 written very small, but it says appellation, Pulinin Mont Rachet, Premier Cru Controlé. So Pulinin Mont Rachet, that's the name of the village, okay? And let me give you another tip. On Burgundy label, when you see Premier Cru, the first cru, you see this on this label, and that's very small. It means that uh, a few plots of vines, they are ranked as Premier Cru, producing uh, better grapes. So let's say that the, the best uh, plots of vines sometimes within a village, they are ranked as Premier Cru. So you have something quite nice, okay? Mm. Information number number three. Information number three. You're gonna find uh, the name of the wine. The name of the wine. So, uh, if you visit an estate in France, and that's, I'm sure that's the case everywhere in the world, huh? uh, an estate a winery will not produce just a single wine. Huh? They have a range of different wines. So they give names to those different wines. So you're gonna find the name of the wines uh, in France. In most in many places, the name of the wine will correspond to the name of the plot of vines, okay? So it's like a, a location. And that's the case here. It says Les Pucelles, which is the name of the plot of vines. So the name of the wine can be the name of the plot of vine. It can be also uh, a reference to a grape variety. Uh, that's, the, that's the case, especially in Alsace. Um, what else you can have, or and just names that they give like, but you always find a name, okay? And last information, that's of course the vintage, the vintage, that's the year of the harvest, okay? Um, so all those information, you're gonna find them in the label. If you don't find all of them, well, just turn the bottle and they have a back label where you're going to find those information. Those info, they are mandatory, so you will always find them, huh? okay? So, uh, this being said, well, let's look at the next tip. Don't hesitate, huh? if you have any questions, use the chat. Or oh, just, yes, just let's look at a few examples here. So we have uh, two different labels on this example. Well, let's look at the first on the on the left. Uh, no, on the right. On the right. On the right. Huh? On the right, you see. First, let's look at the name of the estate. Well, it says Domaine du Belair. So, Domaine du Belair. That's the name of the estate. Uh, location of production. Well, if you look, you see Bourgueil. You know, that's the name of the vineyard. Huh? And it says just below Appellation Bourgueil Contrôlé. So. Bourgueil, that's the name of the vineyards. That's the, the name of the location where the grapes come from and where the wine is produced. Um, you have the name of the wine, huh? this particular cuvée. It's, it's, it's called the Les Marsol. Huh? This is written just below the, the estate, Les Marsol. Uh, I think for this one, Les Marsol, this is a reference to a plot of wine. And you have the vintage 2014, okay? Uh, if we look at the label on the left, uh, well, the domain, it's written uh, just on the top. It says Domaine du Clonodin. So that's the name of the estate. Uh, then that's a Vouvray appellation. So it's made at Vouvray. Uh, what else do we have? We have the, uh, well, the name of the wine. We have, so Foro, for this case, Foro, that's also the name of the, that's not the uh, name of the wine, it's the name of the winemaker. But if you compare this label with another wine, you're going to see that that's a moelleux. Moelleux in the Loire, it, say, it, it means that moelleux, that's a sweet Vouvray. So when you see moelleux, you, you, should, you have something sweet. Huh? So that's a moelleux, that's the name of the wine. And uh, you have also the reserve, reserve in the right. Reserve means that uh, for this estate, that's also the name of the wine. That's their best grape varieties. Okay, and you have the vintage two 
2015. Ah, so Ashley asked a very good question. If the wine label has the name of the vineyard, how are we supposed to know what the grapes are? Very good questions. Well, remember, if you know the name of the vineyard, try to identify the whole region, okay? And if you identify the whole regions, then you can really filter and eliminate lots of different grapes. Uh, let me take an example for this bottle. Uh, this bottle, you're going to find it in the Loire Valley section on the wine list. Or if you enter a wine shop on the on the Loire Valley part of the wine shop, or if you just ask uh, the sommelier, he's, he's going to tell you this is a Loire Valley wine. So Loire Valley wine, okay, that's a white from the Loire. So you can eliminate uh, the Chardonnay. It's not going to be a Chardonnay. It could be a Sauvignon Blanc, but no, that's a sweet wine. So they don't make sweet Sauvignon Blanc. So it's not a Sauvignon Blanc. And you, you eliminate like this. And at the end, maybe you will maybe keep one or two varieties, but that's how it works. If I take the example on the right, um, okay, Bourgueil, same. Huh? This is in the Loire Valley section. So you know it's coming from the Loire. That's a red from the Loire. So mm, there's a high chance that this is going to be a Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc, that's a big grape in the Loire. So really, if you search for the grape, uh, if you don't, if you know the vineyard but you don't know exactly, just try to see the, the whole region. And if you know the whole regions, you can first eliminate lots of grape varieties. And second, if you know the whole region, you can start thinking, oh, okay, this region is more like in the north, so uh, coming from a cooler climate, so mm, maybe this is not going to be a full-bodied red wine, you know? Um, and you can do the opposite. If you come across a bottle from the, the Languedoc in the south of France, you can start, uh, first you can eliminate all the northern grapes like Cabernet Franc, the Pinot Noir and others. And you can also start thinking, okay, this is from, coming from the south of France. So it should be full bodied and quite thick and quite rich. Okay. So this is how it works in France. So the region will really help you uh, know what you have behind the label and then of course the, the more you you know what the, you know the oppositions you know what the grapes behind you, you need to to understand also that behind an appellation uh Bourgueil on the right or Vouvray in the in the left there is also always some allowed grape varieties and if you are in the Loire Valley for instance well there's always just one grape behind those appellations. So Bourgogne will be a Cabernet Franc and Vouvray, that's a 100% Chenin Blanc. All right? So, uh, so Ashley, I, I hope my explanations will help. But if there is really one thing to remember, try to remember to know the region and then you can eliminate uh, many options. Okay, let's continue. Ah. How to choose a red wine? So I'm going to answer also the question of Janice, uh, which region has a good light-bodied red wine like Pinot Noir? So how to choose a red wine? Well, um, I have divided the wines in terms of different styles, okay? And I've been trying to make this very easy, simple. Um, first category, the light red wine. So that's for you, Janice, light red wine. So I mean... Red wines, light body with low tannin. Uh, that early, you're gonna drink when they're young. You know, you will, you won't, you don't want to edge those wines. I mean, most of them. So those red wines, red light red, they are that catch all wines. You can pair them with many different foods, uh, uh, meat of course, but also fish. Um, light food, not too spicy. You, you're gonna find those light red wines in. The entry level wines from Burgundy, the entry level Loire Valley wines, uh, the, the, the reds from the Beaujolais as well, uh, in Alsace. So you see all those northern parts of France and huh, the cooler climate. Now, if we look at the opposite, uh, the full bodied red wines, uh, richer, um, tasty, um, with higher tannin, more alcohol, more body. Uh, with a color which is darker um, and some having a good edging potential, you're going to find those red wines in the Rhone Valley, in the Languedoc-Roussillon, so south of France, 
uh, at Bordeaux, of course, in the southwest of France, so more like in the south of France, okay? And well, there, there is this category, which is a bit in between red, so medium tannin, medium body, uh, Loire Valley wines, uh, Mer Bordeaux, uh, Merlot blends with a dominant Merlot, and I would, I would also uh, um, include the Burgundy Premier Cru and Grand Cru. Okay, so uh, this is how to choose a red wine. If you are a bit lost, if you look at a wine list at the restaurants and you want to drink a red wine, you want to drink a, a French light red, so you know where to find your light red wines. And if you want a full bodied red, more like in the south, okay? Ah, Elsa, qu'est-ce que je préfère? What do I prefer, Cornas ou Vaqueras? I would say Cornas because we are more like in the north, but I had some great Vaqueras. But Vaqueras, for me, sometimes they are a bit too, too rich, a bit jammy. Um, so it's a difficult question and depends on the who who is the winemaker, but just... Putting those two names together, I would go for a Cornas. Yeah. What about you? Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the Cornas or the Vaqueras? Okay. So that was for the red wines. And now, same question. Ah, Chapoutier, yeah. Same question for the white wine, okay? Same question for the white. How to choose a bottle of white in France? Sam, uh, I have put the, the white in two. Two different categories, the lighter white and the medium full-bodied white. First, and that's, that's still a reference between the northern region, the, the cooler region, and the south of France, which are much warmer. Um, so the lighter white wines with light body, crisp acidity, uh, dry, fruity, early drinking whites um, that you're going to pair with seafood, uh, fresh seafood with dry cheese with light food, uh, summer salads also, for instance. Um, they can be also nice with, if you eat some fat uh, charcuterie, you know, it will balance a bit the fat with with the freshness uh, of those wines. Well, you're going to find those light whites at Chablis, Chablis, uh, which is the north part of Burgundy, the entry-level Chardonnay from Burgundy. Uh, most dry Loire Valley wines, huh? uh, Alsace, the dry whites from Alsace, and most, I would say most French entry-level whites that are not aged in oak. Huh? Same at Bordeaux. Huh? At Bordeaux, uh, they produce a few whites. Uh, entry-level white, easy drinking, crisp, that's in this category. Uh, what do I mean by entry-level? I mean the... Um, I would say if you have a range of different wines produced by a winery, by an estate, that's the first price, okay? The, I'm saying entry level, first price. The cheapest wines from the, the offer, okay? Cheapest wine, yeah. Um, medium full-bodied whites, uh, that's whites with some oak aging, uh, with a good aging potentials, uh, which are richer, okay, with more body. You're going to find those, uh, the Premier Cru and the Grand Cru in Burgundy, so the best from Burgundy, uh, with some oak aging. The most white from the Rhone, uh, the Rhone Valley, uh, it's more south again. Uh, the, the grapes, they get more sun, so more alcohol at the end, more body, richer. At Bordeaux also, and in the Languedoc. So again, uh, you have northern climate, cooler climate, lighter wine, and full-bodied and in the south, okay? So those medium and full-bodied whites, you can pair them with some uh, tasty food, spicy food, um, dishes which are more like creamy, you know, uh, a fish which is cooked with some cream, uh, better for this, those medium and full-bodied whites in this category. Okay. Ashley, which grapes from the Languedoc? Uh, so for, for the reds, huh, that's the Syrah, Grenache, which is very big in the Languedoc. Syrah, Grenache, Morvedra, Senso, a bit of Carignan for the reds. 
the grapes from the, the white varieties from the Languedoc, they, they, they grow a lot of local varieties. Um, they grow a bit of Chardonnay. You can, you can find some Chardonnay, but you're going to find some um, Bourboulin local varieties, uh, some white Grenache, uh, a bit of Roussan and Marsan. Grapes that you can find also in the south and Royal. Um, a bit of Viognier as well in the Languedoc. A bit of Viognier. So grapes that, in general, uh, like those warm climates. And of course, I was mentioning Chardonnay. They grow a bit of Chardonnay in the Languedoc, but that's completely different in terms of style. If you compare a Chardonnay from the Languedoc, if, if you compare it to uh, the north part of France and especially Burgundy, it has nothing very different. Uh, champagne. Champagne, a tip, uh, okay, champagne, when you come across a bottle of champagne, on a few, on some bottles of champagne, you can see a vintage, but you're going to see that most champagne, they, are, they don't show any vintage, they are non-vintage, okay? So, tip number nine, champagne vintage and non-vintage. Uh, the non-vintage champagne, those are the majority, okay? Um, so, why why they don't show any vintage on the majority of champagne because most champagne they are a blend of different years so they blend different years they can put the name of a vintage on the label and next question why do they blend different years in champagne because in champagne the very big brands the big estates they want to reproduce the same style every year okay it's like a perfume and huh? when you like a brand you want to find again the same flavors for perfume every year. That's the same for champagne. The big brands, they want to reproduce the style every year. So if they want to remain consistent like this, uh, well, you know, they cannot use just the grapes from the vintage one year because every vintage is a bit different. So they keep some uh, wines on, on, the, on their wineries and they make blends of different years. So that's champagne. Huh? Uh, so blend of different years for the majority, it's it's the it's like a perfume again. It's it's the the, the estate signature, and those champagne, the non vintage, they are ready to be enjoyed as soon as you buy them, as soon as they are released. So um, if you want to edge champagne in your wine cellar, well, you should consider edging the vintage champagne. So the next category. A champagne which has no vintage on the label it's meant for be enjoyed right now you can keep it one two years but it will not improve with time now uh, the vintage champagne that's the that's not the majority that's the minority uh, it's produced not every year it's produced only during the the best vintages they have the vintage on the label of course um, they are produced only the best years and usually if you if you look at the range of wines at an estate, those are the premium cuvées, the best champagnes. Uh, they have, they show more complexity. They have more strength, more body. Uh, they have a good aging potential. And the most famous brand for the vintage champagne, that's Dom Perignon. Dom Perignon will only produce vintage champagne. So Dom Perignon, if the year, if the vintage is not good enough, they don't produce champagne, okay? Um, so if you want to treat yourself and enjoy your great champagne, well, that's, that's interesting. And to drink a uh, champagne, which is uh, 15 years old, uh, it, it's more complex. You still have some, you lose a bit, some, some, uh, sparkling, some bubbles, but that's, that's nice. Huh? That's really nice. So I like to edge some champagne from the year of birth of my kids. Uh, it's, it's, it's always nice. Huh? And if you want to, I think a, a vintage champagne, that's also a good option. If you want to drink champagne during the world dinner or for, for the world lunch, well, it has more strength, more body. So it can also stand some heavier food huh, when you do some pairing. It's richer. Okay. So next time you buy a bottle of champagne, just look at the label and try to see if you have a vintage or if you don't. Okay. If you don't show, if you don't have a vintage, well, just drink it. And if you have a vintage, well, two options: huh? you drink it or you let it age a few years.
Okay. Oh, this is a picture of Champagne. Don Perignon, is that the actual Champagne house? It's more like a special label. Well, yes. Today, it's more like a, a, it's a brand. It's owned by Mouet and Chandon, Don Perignon. So if you visit Mouet and Chandon estate in Champagne, you're going to see the, the, the also the production of Don Perignon. So it's a brand. Uh, so, I mean, if when I'm coming back to those uh, vintages Champagne, if the, 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 the vintage is not good enough to produce a Don Perignon, well, don't worry, and they're going to use the grapes to produce the the the, 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 the Mouet and Chandon uh, other wines. Huh? So it's it's a brand which is owned today by Mouet and Chandon. No uh, so this is a picture of the harvest in Champagne. So every the in the uh, in the specifications for the Champagne appellations, the the, the harvest must be done by hand. So. Everything is done by hand in Champagne, so it's a huge vineyard. So if you visit Champagne end of August, beginning of, se of September, you're going to see many people uh, doing the harvest everywhere in Champagne. Uh, right, and last tip I want to give you tonight. I have often this question, what is a Grand Cru? So let me explain this. What is a Grand Cru? Meaning of those two words, Grand Cru. Um, so first, those two words, cru, first in French, it means that's a vineyard producing wines of a recognized quality and usually recognized best quality, okay? So that's cru, C-R-U, that's, that's the, the meaning of cru. And grand in French mean uh, high, mean big, mean premium in, in French, okay? So basically a grand cru, this is the best vines, the best vineyards, okay? So you might you might see Grand Cru on uh, very expensive wines in French on on famous uh, chateaux, um, but the meaning of Grand Cru is different between uh, Burgundy, Alsace, Champagne, and Bordeaux. Okay, so let's look at the meaning of Grand Cru. If you uh, visit Burgundy, Alsace, or Champagne, well, it's a reference to a plot of vines with a name. That's very important to understand this. So if you come across a Grand Cru in Burgundy, you're going to see Grand Cru plus the name of this vineyard, of this plot of vines, which, which is a, uh, ranked as a Grand Cru, okay? And usually in Burgundy, in Alsace, in Champagne, a plot of vines, which is ranked as a Grand Cru, well, it's usually split between different estates, okay? Different wine growers, okay? So all those different estates, they can label their wines with the name of the Grand Cru. Sometimes you might see Grand Cru Monopole. Monopole means that this is a cru which is owned by a single estate, okay? And also in those regions, uh, well, a Grand Cru is an appellation by itself. Uh, an example, appellation, Chambertin Grand Cru Contrôlé, okay? So what you need to remember, it's that in those regions, this is a reference to a plot of vines, which is ranked as a Grand Cru. Now, if you go to Bordeaux, at Bordeaux, Grand Cru is, is a reference to a chateau, not a plot of vines. It's, it's a reference to a chateau recognized as producing wines of the best quality. So it's like a reference to a brand. Uh, so what I mean, I mean that if the chateau at Bordeaux decides to, to increase the size of its vineyards, well, the wines will still be a Grand Cru, which is not be the case in the previous regions. Huh? And at Bordeaux, uh, at Bordeaux, they have created different classifications uh, for those different Grand Cru. So I'm not entering in too many details because it's, it's quite complex and I would spend a, um, half an hour to explain the different classifications at Bordeaux. But what you need to remember that when you buy a Grand Cru, well, first, the price will be much more expensive. Or when someone offers you a Grand Cru, uh, well, you have a nice friend. But uh, Grand Cru, they are also nice to, for aging. So if you buy a young vintage, well, I would recommend you to let it age at least 10 years in a good wine cellar because Grand Cru, uh, they, they really show all the potentials after 10 years in general. Uh, the wines, they get very complex and, that's, and the, the texture is very smooth. So uh, you, you really understand the quality of a Grand Cru after 
minimum of 10 years in general. And concrete, you're going to find this both, both for reds and whites. Last thing I want to say about Grand Cru, huh? it's not because your bottle of wine is not a Grand Cru that this is going to be something of lower quality. Huh? Some very famous wines in France, they are not labeled as Grand Cru, but they are very good. And the best example for this at Bordeaux, that's Petrus. I don't know if you have heard of Petrus. Petrus is today the most expensive Bordeaux, and it's not a Grand Cru. So... Ah, Alza, Elsa, which are the best vineyards to visit in Bordeaux? Uh, well, you, you should go to Saint-Emilion because the Saint-Emilion, that's a lovely village and all the vines, the vineyards around, they're quite famous and, and they produce also great wines. Uh, and then you should go to the Medoc part. But Elsa, you, I'm going to talk with you later about this. I, I'm going to give you a few recommendations, okay? This is, a, this is a Grand Cru in Burgundy. So usually in uh, you're going to find a Grand Cru with a, a vineyard on a slope. The slopes, that's really the best terroir where they produce the best grape varieties. Why a slope? Because on the slope, the, the water is more like drain away. And on the slope, the grapes, when they grow, they have a better exposure with the sun. They're also more protected against high wind and other um, issues. So usually when you look... Uh, on the landscape of Burgundy, Alsa, Champagne, and Bordeaux, well, the, gr the Grand Cru, they are always on slopes, okay? And that's the case, I think, if you go outside France, huh, if you go to Italy, to Germany, to Spain, to the US, everywhere, well, the, the big, the, 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 the best wines that always, in most cases, produce on high, on steep slopes, huh? All right, so uh, I'm finished with those 10 tips. Uh, I'm, so I'm just taking five uh, other minutes to, um, to describe my, the, the new versions, my new online course, if you want to keep on learning French wine. So I'm, just give me two or three other minutes and then I'm going to answer the questions. So how to keep, if you want to, if you want to keep on learning French wine, uh, I have created an online course the, the, my online course, it's called 100 days, three minutes per day to learn French wine. So uh, the idea is, is to send you a three minutes video every day during 100 days. And then you're going to be a French wine expert. So um, so the objective is to, to help you uh, read and understand any French wine label, know what you drink, what you expect. Uh, if you go to a restaurant, well, you can be the one who chooses the wine, of course. If you enter a wine shop, you will be you, you can identify the best values. And if you enjoy wine with your friend, you can share your knowledge, surprise your friends, and even your wine snob friends. So, how does it look like this uh, online course? Uh, you have a, a, a screenshot just on the right of my screen. Well, it's it's a it's an online course which is hosted online on a private platform, so you get an access to see all the different contents. And every day, every day during 100 days, there's a new three minutes video which is released on on your um, uh, private space. Okay, so all the videos they are organized by modules, uh, and at the end of each modules, you get a summary of what you really need to remember. And I'm also giving you and some recommendations of wines that you can buy, you can purchase to train yourself. Okay, so uh, so again, uh, hundred days every day you get a new video, three minutes video. Uh, at the end, you, you get also the possibility to pass a test and get a certificate at the end. And all the, the contents on this on your platform they remain available uh, twenty four hours, seven days. Huh? So. As soon as a new three minutes video is released, uh, it remains available. Uh, well, in addition to this online course, I'm also inviting you to my regular live classes online that I'm doing regularly, uh, which are mo most of them dedicated to a particular wine region, but sometimes also dedicated to uh, wine and food pairings. 
uh, and this is the occasion that we can talk together and ask some questions, okay? And you have also all the replays and unlimited access. Um, so I'm launching this new versions of this uh, 100 days Suminus video. Um, so in, in the next two days, next 48 hours, I'm doing a launching offer with a 50% off. So I'm selling this at 100 euros instead of 200 euros. So if you want to keep on learning French wine, well, that's really the occasion, the opportunity for you to, to become an expert with French wine. Um, so again, I remember a new video released every day during 100 days uh, with a limited access and why not a certificate at the end? So I'm going to give you the link on the chat uh, on the page where you can see more details about this, how it works. Uh, and last thing I wanted to say, uh, and you have also, if you if you uh, purchase the online course, you get also a 15 days warranty. So you don't, don't take any risk. Huh? If you start following the, the online course and you see, well, this is this course is this course is not for you. Well, you get reimbursed and no question asked. So you don't take any risk. Uh, I'm giving you the link. Let me check this in the chat and anywhere. I'm gonna send it to you by email also. Yeah, you get the link. If you click on the link in the chat, you're gonna have access to a page um, describing how it works. Uh, what I just said. Uh, right now okay so i wanted to show you this uh, launching offer so it's available during uh, uh, two days so don't uh, miss this opportunity um, and i'm coming back so i'm i have finished with the presentation and i'm gonna come back to your questions okay uh, you, if you have also questions about the online course huh, that's really the occasion don't hesitate to use the chat on the right. So let me check your question. Alad, there you had a question, a technical question about the the density of the vineyards. If the soil is too poor in the southwest and in Brittany to have the same density of vineyards, well, uh, difference between southwest and Brittany, it's more about the climate. Also, uh, the issue with Brittany is the is this very humid climate, uh, which is a big issue for the viticulture, especially during the growing season. And the uh, so the density usually uh, has more something to do with the the, the, the soil characteristics. Huh? Um, and in the southwest, well, it depends. Huh? Uh, you can find different densities of of of, um, of vines in different close area in the southwest. So it's also the uh, depending on what the the wine growers want to produce the concentration into his grape varieties. So usually you find the uh, the best uh, wines with the uh, high density of uh, plantations, but it's more like the, 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 your reference to the Brittany Southwest. It's more about the climate. So Elsa, you were mentioning Chapoutier. You might. I love Chapoutier as well. I had. I recently had a really nice tasting of delicious uh, wines from the Rhone, from the Hermitage uh, and all this area. Um, so entry level wines, I mentioned this, that was the first price uh, in, in a winery offer. Grapes from the Languedoc, so I mentioned this. Uh, so again, uh, uh, I gave you 10 tips, so I enter in the, in, into the details of 10 tips, but if there was just one thing to remember in France, maybe to help you with the label is to um, to learn the region first in France. Okay, Loire Valley, this is gonna be this variety, uh, this style of wine. Um, okay, Beaujolais, this is this variety, this style of wine. Um, the Languedoc, okay, this variety, this style of wine. And all, always, Keeping in mind, okay, this is north part of France. This is the south 
So it's really working uh, like this, okay? So uh, thanks for coming. Thank you, Ashley, for your, for your comment. Um, well, don't hesitate to look at the, uh, the online course. Uh, I try to put a maximum value on all those video contents. Uh, three minutes. Sometimes it's a little bit more than three. It can, be, it can go up to four. Uh, sometimes a little bit less than three minutes. But in average, this is three minutes. So I, I didn't want to, to do long videos because I want it to be more impactful on what you really need to remember. And again, don't hesitate to try it uh, during this 15 days time. Okay, so Maximilian, thank you for your comment. Merci beaucoup. Um, uh, I see you writing in French, so good. And uh, if you have questions coming in the in the next hours, in even tomorrow, don't hesitate to send me an email or to reach me on social media. Uh, I will be always happy to answer. And you will receive a link in the maybe next hour with the uh, the replay if you want to come back on the content. It's available. All right. So goodbye, everyone, everybody. And I uh, hope to see you soon during uh, another live session uh, or another, uh, or maybe directly in the online course. Um, Ivanka, yes, all the all the contents they are all in English uh, in the online course. Everything is in English. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have some friends in uh, in France. They are asking me to do this uh, in French as well. So I think uh, I'm going to do a French version very soon. But yes. This training is everything is in English, everything. And sometimes I'm including also some uh, keywords on the video so that you really uh, remember everything. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. Have a nice evening, a nice dinner, and maybe a ni nice good night to you. <laughs> Axana, thank you.